Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my August book haul. Now, these are some of my favourite videos to record because I'm sharing with you the books I've got. Now, when I looked at the shelves and I took everything off, it's when I took everything off that I went, okay, I did buy quite a few books in August. And that's not counting the ones I got at the end of August that I'm putting on September's TBR on September's haul list because yeah well they were right down the end and I just think I, I know what I'm like I did do what I did last year last year I, I've seen a note that I put up I bought 50 books in August so only 33 that's not bad I got gifted nine which was brilliant I'm so grateful for my gifts but 33 books it's not as bad as last year but it was done because it was comfort buying it was I've finished work, I'm going to pop to the charity shop to get half an hour on my own because it'll be the only half an hour I get for the day. It's like going book shopping was the only time I had where I wasn't with the kids. So I kind of enjoyed it. And I know that going forward, I'm not like, I'm recording this on the on the 2nd of September, the day they've gone back. Tomorrow is the 3rd, I'm working, but I'm not going to Buzz Books tomorrow. I'm going to be good, excuse me. I'm going to not go possibly next week. I may know it next week after work. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try and like reduce the amount I go into town and go book buying because I don't need to buy them. I've got you guys have just seen my August TV of uh, my August wrap up part two, so you know how many books I've got. I've just unhauled one book, which I'm happy about, and I'm one haul unread because I realised I had two copies of the same book. Quick question before I before I start showing you what I've got, and I've got a lot to show you. I've got two copies of the Moonstone because one of them I got gifted. Do I keep the other copy? It's quite a nice copy and I don't know whether I should keep it or wait until after Victober when I've read it. Yes, that's a sneaky peek. The Moonstone is one of the books I'm reading for Victober. Do I wait and see if I love it? Because if I love it, I don't mind having two copies of it because I've got two copies of Wuthering Heights. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's get started. Let me show you what I've got. And I will show you my gifts and I can show you actually some, some statistics on the genres I bought. How many genres I bought. Because I'll put them in piles. Or at least the two biggest piles I can show you. So, the first books I got of the month were from my sister Charlie. Who we decided to do Christmas in July. And I got them right at the end. So they've gone on to August. Me and this rolling over. This is my own fault I think. So, she bought me two lovely books. First of all, she got me my own copy of Hamnet, which you guys have all spoken about so much over the years, over the last year or so. I didn't want to pay for it in hardback, so we did wait for it to come out in paperback. And Charlie knew that was what this is one that I've been talking about a lot. I friggin' loved my last Maggie O'Farrell book. I loved the September, the summer one, the summer heatwave one. And I really wanted to read this because this is set in obviously 1596 about Hamnet. You all know about it. I don't need to talk about it, but this is a beautiful hardback copy. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a paperback copy, but it's... <laughs> Look at those pages. Charlie did spectacularly. So, yeah, I just love the end pages. This is a beautiful copy. It's one I'm treasuring forever. I'm not going to read that straight away because I think I might try and buddy read that, but... And then she got me this one, because this is the one that she knew. She was asking me what's on my members of wish list that I really was desperate for. Now this is Dear, Yours Cheerfully by AJ Pierce, and it is the sequel to Dear Mrs. Bird. I read Dear Mrs. Bird a couple of years ago. It was in my top books of the year. I friggin' loved it, and I cannot wait to read this. So another one, Sneaky Peek. This is going on October TBR. Again, the end pages. I've got a thing. In one of my videos, you'll find out whether I'm questioning whether I love paperbacks or hardbacks. And I love my heart paperbacks mainly, but the end pages on this, it's stunning. It's the sequel to Here's I Love You, No Dear Mrs. Bird, which I loved. It's got about a woman writer. It's got all about her. It's got about, it's a wartime, set in the wartime. It's beautiful. I've just realised I've messed up the pages a little bit. But it's stunning. Cannot wait to read that. So thank you, my sister Charlie. You aced it. And I'm sure she'll watch this watch all my videos anymore then i got two books sent to me by the love by one of my lovely subscribers kirsty thompson by now she would have received a book that i've sent to her but she was going through i was saying that i like you know i like certain editions of books and you guys know i love the wordsworth classics edition 
So she showed me some books she was getting rid of and she asked me if I wanted them. This is a gorgeous edition of The Moonstone. I am going to read it in October. I have another edition, but it's not as pretty. And then she wrote me the lovely note. I've loved your channel over the last year or so. Dear Emily, I've loved your channel over the last year or so. Please keep making your great videos. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on these books, Kirsty. She put me kisses and beautiful. And it looks brand new. In the second hand, it's brand new. And I loved it. So I can't wait to read that. So that's on my October TBR. And then she got me Crime and Punishment. Now, if you would have seen my wrap up part two, you would have known that I didn't like the brothers Kamroskov. But when I read Crime and Punishment, I did like it, but I didn't like my edition of it. So I got rid of my edition. So when she said that she was getting, had this edition of it, I thought, oh, I want these. And it's actually one I want to reread Crime and Punishment. I think Crime and Punishment will be better than the brothers K. And I, want, I know I've read it and I, like, I enjoyed certain bits of it. So I think this one will be good to reread. So thank you, Kirsty. Then you guys know I met up with Gemma. Our books that I bought with her when I was out with Gemma will be on next month's TBR, next month's book haul. But she did give me five books and she checked with them if I wanted them because she's lovely. We love giving each other books. She got me Sons and Daughters, which I've never read by D.H. Lauren. I've been looking at this in the charity shops and nearly buying it. Don't know too much about it. Don't want to know too much about it. But I know I'm keeping it. Love Sarah Waters. Loved, loved, loved The Fingersmith. And this, she's given me this gorgeous edition of Sipping the Velvet. You all know about that. It's from the Oyster Huts in Whitstable to the music halls of Victorian London. Tipping the Velvet is the glorious first novel from this author. So I always wanted this. And this edition's stunning. So that's that one. Then a book that she got sent and she's now giving to me, Saving Missy. I really like this. I got this on ebook in the library, but I stopped myself. 79 years old is too late for a second chance, isn't it? Missy Carmichael is prickly, stubborn and terribly lonely until their chance encounter in the park with two very different women open the door to something new, something wonderful. Cannot wait to read this. I'm now, I think I might actually start to do my piles over here. Then, I, you guys know that I read a book by Ruth Hogan last month that I friggin' loved. I didn't love... Keeper of Lost Things was all right. Queenie Malone's Paradise Hotel I loved. Sally Red Shoes was all right. This was... I really want to read this. This is magical. Okay, look at this edition of it. It's beautiful. I don't know too much about it. Tarot Reader, Palmist, Secret Keeper. I struggle with tarot cards and stuff, but this still looks really exciting. And again, look at this edition. It looks brand new and beautiful. Then lastly, she gave me The Beauty of Impossible Things by Emma Do Rachel Donoghue. I've heard lots of positive things about this. I've seen a lot of people actually rave about it. Someone was reviewing it this month. It's a short but sweet book. Hardback, dazzling, a darkly beguiling coming of age tale threaded with fading seaside glamour and simmering heat. All I need to know, Jane, it's a beautiful cover. Love the look of it. Cannot wait to read it. So that's those books that I've been gifted. Now, try not, I won't. Again, I've got 33 books to show you. I will not go into too much detail on any of them, but if you want to know more details, please comment below. Let me know which ones you want me to tell you about, and I will do. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven contemporaries. That's not bad. I think I think it's only like three, two or three non-fiction. Eleven contemporaries, then historical fiction. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 historical fictions. Kind of get the idea where I'm going on this, don't you? To kind of can tell my two favourite genres. Although in my wrap up, I read a lot more contemporary last month, so I'm not feeling as guilty about buying those 11. Let's show you. So the first one I got was Meet Me at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. Got this in my local charity shop, Baz Books. Love cupcakes, love her books about food. And this is another series that I haven't got yet. So I'm starting to look this series. So I need the Christmas one. I think it's a Christmas one. I don't know if there's another one coming out. Izzy Randell can bake. No more than that. Izzy can create a stunning mouth-watering divine cakes. After a childhood spent in her beloved Grandpa Joe's bakery, she's undoubtedly developed his kitchen. Um, his talent. Inherited his talent. When she's made redundant from her safe and dull city job, she seizes the moment. She goes and runs a the Cupcake Cafe. Don't need to know any more than that. Love Jenny Colgan's books. Look forward to having another series. Now this one I picked up for 20p at my local charity shop. And I've actually, I think this is the one I actually made Gemma buy it when we went shopping. 
set on two timelines, but it's a contemporary. So in 1990 and 2018. Does 1990 count as historical fiction now? I'm wondering, even though it's only like 30 years ago. Does that count as historical fiction? Let me know. The secrets that bind us also tear us apart. In 1990, Harry is a, Harriet is a journalist and her dog takes her to dangerous places and she's sent to Romania. In 2018, Ellie is a gardener. Her garden is her sanctuary, her pride and joy. Although she spends long days outdoors, she's not set foot beyond the gate too far. Now someone enters her life who could finally be the reason she needs to overcome her fear. From post-revolution Romania to ideal, idyllic English countryside, the world at my feet is too, is a story of two women, two worlds and a journey of self-discovery. Oh, Jen, we're going to have to read this sooner. This looks really good. 20p, I'm not blooming unhappy with that. Then I did some car, but I did go to a car boot. So that's another reason why I might, some of my numbers are a bit higher. I've got the wedding, the little wedding shop book. And I've just found the Christmas book. So this my plan is next year to read the first one and then read this for Christmas next year. But I thought, if you've got one, you've got to have the, the follow-up. Just like the perfect wedding cake, beautifully crafted and wrapped in romance. So I don't want to say too much about this because all I know is there's the wedding shop. I've got the first one, so this is the Christmas one, so it's the next in the series. Okay, look at the front cover. It's beautifully Christmassy and gorgeous, and I just love it. Then... I believe, I think I found this one at the, at the car boot last night, but I can't say that name. But this was all over Booktube. This is a relatively new release. It's about four friends, Eve, Justin, Susie and Ed, and they've been best friends since they were 18. Now in their 30s, the four are still close as ever. Thursday pub nights quiz is still sacred, and Eve is secretly in love with Ed. This looks friggin' good. To get it for a pack, I think it was 50p, was brilliant. It's been all over Booktube. And bookstagram i think it's more over bookstagram to be honest but two best friends one missed chance a night that changes everything i like books with characters in their 30s now because i know i'm in my 40s but kind of not too far away and i found this in my fast books and this was all over the bookshops all over woking when i went out with Gemma. so that i think Gemma's read this as well Gemma read this and loved it it has got infidelity in it which is something i struggle with but apparently it doesn't glamorize infidelity now the author, this is author, the author Ruth Jones was from Gavin and Stacey, which I loved. Her newest book is brilliant and my sister Charlie's love, it's really, I don't think, I think she's read it and loved it. So I want her new book when it comes out. But to see this for a pound is brilliant. It's about Kate when she was 22 and then 17 years later, life's moved on. So again, I think we've got the two timelines, but Kate meets Hannah again. Second chances are a rare gift in life, but it doesn't mean they should be taken. Again, you can see the infidelity, but apparently it's not romanticised. So that should mean that I should love it more. Because I really struggle with infidelity. It's something that's very personal to me and something I really struggle with. So Then again, I saw this for a pound. This is only 200. This is a very short book. I think it's got short stories in it. Another short story one, The Lilac Bus. I love purple. Love the cover. Every Friday without fail, the Lilac Bus transports seven people from the bus of Dublin to spend the weekend in in the village of Rathdoon. Each passenger has their own reason for making that trip. What's Judy hiding? Why is Rupert so unwilling to return home? Friendships are forged, secrets are revealed, and it soon becomes this clear. There's more to meet the eye of these characters. It looks really good. I fancy a bit more Irish literature. I'm really loving my Irish literature, actually, which leads on to the next book, which was on my Amazon wish list. And it's been a book. It's I, You guys know I love Cecilia Hearn. I think by now you should have heard that I got accepted onto the read along of Freckles, which is her newest book by Tandem, and I've been set on getting sent that book. I cannot jump up and down. I literally, as soon as I got the email, I sent Chloe and Gemma, my two book two best friends, a message going, I got it! Because I love Cecilia Hearn's books. I'm collecting all of them. I need to read another one, I think. I'm not obviously not going to need to read another one in September because I'm getting a new one, but I need to carry on going. This is the one that I didn't have. This is the film edition, which I know I'm a bit funny about film edition covers, but it's a story about love and how life gets in the way. Best friends since forever, Rosie and Alex, have shared their hopes, dreams and their first, but one awkward moment, 18, one missed opportunity and life sends them hurtling in different directions. So want to read this. So want to read this. So saw that and the, saw that on the car boot and screamed again. You know of my excitement. Apparently you guys love my excitement, but yeah. And again, this was at the car boot as well. I love my Veronica Henry books. This was one I didn't have. 
don't need to know much more before the beach hut enjoy wild oats oh i've read the beach hut so this oh i hope that's going to be okay that i'm re reading this first jamie wilding's return home is not quite going to plan a lot's changed since the picturesque Shropshire village of Upper Thavale, since the death of her mother. Her father is broke and behaves like a teenager. Her best friend marriage is falling apart. And the man she loves, has lost her heart to years ago, is trying to buy her the love of his home. Ooh, this looks good. Another one. Then I picked up three. I think these are the three I picked up from my, not the Buzz books, but the charity shop near me. And they were only 25p each. This one is new out this year. So to get that for 25p, I screamed. I love it, my Heidi Swain books. Although I kind of bought one last month that I should have bought a prequel. This isn't part of a series, so this is really good. This is about Tess Tyler needing a break. This is going to be saved for next summer because it's a summer book. <laughs> Today, the first, first day back, in, back at school and it's not sunny at all. So the summer's gone. So this is being saved for that. I don't want to know too more. Set in Wynmouth. So Wynmouth, I swear, is... Some of the others, there are other books. That Tess, getting beautiful. For 25p, I was screaming with happiness. Then these two books are from the same Winter series, I think. This is Coming Home for to Cuckoo Cottage, which I know is in that series. I, know, I think, I've, again, I've not been reading the series in order, but this is about Lottie Foster, and she inherits cook, the lovely Cuckoo Cottage. And it's about Will and oh, and it also talks about Gemma from the Cherry Tree Cafe, which I know I've seen her in other books in the series. So this looks really good. 25p, I wasn't complaining. And then this is about the Skylar Farm, which I know is in the other series. And this is about how that sets up and about Amber and setting up Skylar, Skylar Farm with Jake Summerfield. And I love these characters. So the farm, countryside, loved it. 25p. I screamed, and I can't believe this video is already on 17 minutes. So now I've got a series of middle grade books and I'm thinking I'm going to do the YA one. So I'm going to try and separate the one I'm talking to. So I've got my non-fiction ones actually I'll do first. Da -da -da, I didn't plan very well. No, I've got, got a thriller as well. So I've got two YAs, two middle grade, one thriller and three non-fiction. So here we go. My piles on my sofa. This is going to be a lot of work trying to put these away. Again, this was all over Booktube last year and Bookstagram last year. Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. I do not need to tell you anything more about this. This is the story of three women, non-fiction, three stories that got tied together. I know Simon, I think Simon talked about it last year. A lot of people have talked about it. To get it for a pound, not complaining. Brilliant. This is one I picked up. I don't know why. Blackbird, A Childhood Lost and Found. You know me and Childhood Lost and Found. Growing up in the 1970s, I was born in 79. Yes, I do not look that old. I hope I don't anyway, although I feel it after six weeks with the kids. An ordinary girl growing up in the 1970s, an ordinary, cir extraordinary circumstances of a childhood lost and found. And set in Nevada. So that could be interesting. Five-year-old Jennifer Luke will never call home. Will ever call home. Hmm. It's the only place she'll ever call home. It's where Jennifer lives with her older brother, BJ, her father, mother, and her two cats, Mosh and Diana. It should be the perfect, peaceful childhood, but... Jennifer's mother is ill, very ill, and childhood is the last thing Jennifer's going to be allowed. Very hard hitting, but someone, I think on one of my book on my book on my Facebook book group, as a brave developer, and said this is really good. So it's one I'm looking forward to reading. I've got Daphne Du Maurier's, because you know I love Daphne Du Maurier, and this is her autobiography of her, a biography I think, not an autobiography about her father, who was Je Gerald Du Maurier, who was actor manager in his day and knighted for his services to the theatre in 1922. And this was published six, within six months of her father's death. A frank biography, so not an autobiography, biography, was considered shocking by many of his admirers, but it's a new, huge success, winning Daphne du Maurier huge acclaim. This is my book, but my sister Charlie will be getting it once I've read it, because she really wants it as well. Then I've got two YAs, because I'm trying to go away from the YA bit, because I think you can feel that on my age when I've been reading them. This copy, look how gorgeous it is. It is a thoroughly beautiful copy. And it's very hard hitting apparently. When 15 year old Nathan discovers that his older brother has taken his own life, his whole world has torn apart. Al was special, Al was talented. Al had so many dreams, so why did he do it? And this is about his journey. And he's also got his meets Megan, who's Al's former classmate, who is also determined to keep Nate with 
as Nathan to keep Al's memory alive. Together they start seeking answers, but will either of them be able to control, handle the truth about Al's death? Very hard-hitting book, but looks very good. Then I got my own copy of Cinder, because you guys know that I'm collecting my own copy. I've read the whole of the Lunar Chronicles, but they were all my sister Charlie's copies, so now I've got my own copy. I've got Scarlet now, I've got Cinder, so I just need Luna, and I need Winter, and the other one, Cress. So I need my own copies of those, but I'm collecting these. I was well happy to get my own copy. That was actually, I loved Cinder. Didn't, I loved Scarlet more, but I did love Cinder. Then I got a thriller that I know is new out. So finding this for a pound. Tell me your secret. My sister got me another Lee Dorothy Coombson thriller for, for my birthday. And I want this one as well. And this is about 10 years, up, 10 years ago, Peter survived a long weekend with a sadistic serial killer. She never told anyone what happened and instead moved on with her life. But now the man who kidnapped her is hunting her down and past victims can't deny his past victims, meaning that she may have to keep her deepest secret to tell his deepest secret to keep her stay alive. Scary, but looks really good. Again, I was well excited. And now I've got my two middle grade books, but both are by the same author. One copy is better than the other one. So first I've got Dragon Rider, which is a nice copy. Apparently this series is really exciting. I love the Cornelia Funk books. I love the next series that I got. And this is about a dragon, a boy and a journey. And I think Charlie, Charles Heath would like this. So I'm really looking forward to having that, trying that at some point. But then I got the last book in the Inkspell series. I got a hardback edition for two pounds. <laughs> Ink Death. Oh my God. It's chunky. It's mahoosive. It's hardback. It's naked hardback. It's gorgeous. The pictures in this are absolutely stunning. Oh, guys. I'm reading the next one in the series with Gemma in October. Another sneaky peek. So this one may be read December or January, I'm not sure yet. God, look how gorgeous this is. So that's that. Oh, that pile. And now I've got my historical fiction. I, I do not want to make this video too long, so I will not go into too much detail. But I told you I like books set in Ireland and the books about Irish girls. Got the Dublin girls. Do not need to know any more than that. This is set in the 1950s. Life is hard and jobs are like gold dust. Do not need to know anymore. It literally looks beautiful. I don't want to know too much about it. It's about 19-year-old Nell Glynn training to be a nurse and planning to marry her boyfriend when her mother dies and leaving her young sisters destitute. So to save them from the workhouse, Nell returns to the family home. And it's about her story. It looks really good. I'm really looking forward to reading that. Secrets of the Frontline Nurse, which I didn't realise. Third in the series. Stupid me. So I don't know that I'll keep this one up, but it's set in the First World War. And that's been raging about that. Frontline Nurses, wartime book. Shouldn't have bought it though because it's the third in the series. Bloody stupid, aren't I? Sometimes I do these buys and I don't think. This one though, really like the look of. The House at Chawton by Prue Leith. And I swear she's an actress. A shared passion and a love against the odds. And this is set in the World War II is not just over. It's about a proud family, a wild daughter and a desperate hope. In the freezing post-war city, Giovanna and Laura face destitution. Banished from childhood, only their love and their dream of opening a restaurant keeps them alive. This looks brilliant. This looks beautiful. I don't know why the house, the pictures just drew me in. That was one of my... Then this, I believe, is actually Jojo Moyes' first book. And that was one of the ladies at first books got me to get this because it was Jojo Moyes. I love Jojo Moyes' books. And this is when 21-year-old Joy meets handsome naval officer Edward at an ex party in 1950s Hope Hong Kong the last thing she expects is to fall in love and then we've got the 1980 which is jo Joy's younger daughter Kate mysteriously flees the family home 15 years later Kate's own daughter Sabine so this has got like three timelines I believe leaves London in search of her grandparents she's never known hmm. I'm really looking forward to this I've not read her historical fiction very much then I got the next book in the Honeyfield bequest series The Stranger at Honeyfield I love this series. I love this was the one. This is a series that I didn't expect to love as much as I did from my Try Chapter Tag. Set in 1916 and it's set in Honeyfield again. I don't want to tell you too much about it. We've got characters from the first book. This looks gorgeous. This was amazing. I'm so excited about that book. And this is another book that I've been looking at all over my library app and been tempted to either listen to it or read it. So the Opera Room Girls. So this is wartime, but this is set. It's like, I don't know what it is. I think it's the, the aeroplane in it as well that made me want to get it. 
This set in 1913 and working class Edie has received a scholarship to study mathemati mathematics at Oxford when tragedy turns on her head and then she joins the opera in Plotters at the Auxiliary Nurse Force, posted to a fighter station on the Sussex coast. It's about other WAFs. It looks really, really good. This is a wartime series that for some reason has been drawing me in. This was a random one. I think this was my local charity shop, 20p by. Letters from home, two people, two, an unforgettable moment, one extraordinary love love. This looks really pretty. It's set in America during the World War II, which I've not really read many about. And the year is 1944 and America has just entered the World War II. The young men and women are being drafted up. I don't want to know too much about that, but it, American set in World War II, so that could be quite interesting. I think this was, I can't remember where I got this one again, but it's got the dual timeline. You know, me and my dual timeline. One is 1890, and Alice is the sole breadwinner of her family working at a local mill. But when she starts to attract the wrong sort of attention, her life begins to spiral out of control. And then in 2018, so this is very like 100 years apart almost, things haven't quite turned out the way they should have done for Alice. So when an aunt seeks her help running a beloved cafe, Alice jumps at the chance to escape Yorkshire. But she undiscovers, and it's to do with her uncovering the secrets about Alice, her ancestor. So that looks really interesting. This is my Gemma by the Gustav Sonata. Just read one of the Rose Tremaine books that I loved. And I remember everyone saying that this one, that the Gustav Sonata is one of her better ones. And this is Gustav growing up in the small town of Switzerland, where the horrors of the World War II have seemed like a distant echo. And then Gustav's father has mysteriously died and his mother has a strange cold and it's, it's cold and indifferent to him. And then he meets Anton and a lifelong friendship begins to develop but Anton fails to understand how deeply and irre irrevocably his life and Gustav's are in entwined before it's too late. This looks really fascinating. This was the one I got. This is one of my most recent one I bought and I got Frog Music by Emma Donoghue. I've got a book upstairs the sealed letter and I can't remember if I bought it this month or last month or when I bought it but I know this copy matches it I think I got it last month but this is frog music everyone again it's an Emma Donoghue book that I've had raved about Katie from books and things has raved about it and this is set in San Francisco in 1876 a stifling heat wave and a small and a small pot epidemic have engulfed the city so I don't want to know too much but this is one that's been raved about everyone a lot of people have loved it and I can't wait to read that then I got an Amy Tan book, and as you'll well see, I've read Lisa C books and Amy Tan books, and I didn't like my last Amy Tan book, so I'm never wondering if I'm going to like this, but it's set in the 1930s, set in China, I'm hoping I'm going to like this. Lu Li Young is getting old, but, and she can still, and while she still can, she begins to write down the memories of life in the night as a girl in the 1930s China. One day, tending to an alien mother, Lu Ling's daughter, Ruth, uncovers an extraordinary memoir of her childhood spent in the remote village known as Heart, a mortal heart. This actually does look really interesting. Glad I picked that one up. And then lastly, from the, again, this is a Japan rather than China, but this is Elizabeth Adendi. I've heard about this also, I don't know where. This is a Japanese lover, so it's set in the game 1939 in Japan. Now, in the words of world, world Goes to War, Young Alma of Belisco's family's parents sent her to live a life in safety in her aunt's opulent San Francisco mansion. There she meets Ichimi Faduk, I can't say the name, the son of a Japanese, of family's Japanese gardener, and between them a tender love blossoms. But theirs is a love that they're forever forced to hide. This looks really good. I'm really excited about that. So, long video as always. You know me and my hauls. They are long. If you want to know more about any of the books that I've shown you today or want to buddy read with them, please comment below. I'll get my buddy read, read book out. I'll put it all down. Although I'm not booking buddy reads now until next January because I'm all booked up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring on my ding-a-ling and I'll see you all soon. Bye.